welcome once again to GTV, Gatsby's television, and we call it GTV for short. Uh, it's that time and that hour again, and I'm so excited. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, blessed be the name of the Lord who has given us this opportunity to come once again, and I'm trusting and believing that today somebody is going to be blessed. I know it. I can feel it in my spirit. Woo! Somebody is going to bless mightily. And you know what? The enemy is not happy. You know what? The enemy should continue to be sad because when the children of God comes together, the enemy is never happy. Hallelujah. Uh, this is a program called New Life. And uh, we are here once again. My name, as you know, is Pastor G. Love G. Man from New Life Christian Love Fellowship. And as we do it always, we have two segments, the word and the music. We bring you the word of God and we bring you gospel music that would inspire you. And today I have something that will blow you away. I love this so very much. Um, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I will not keep you in suspense, not for too long, but let, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray right now. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Everlasting mighty God, you are the reason for our gathering. We cannot do anything without you because in you we are more than conquerors. And we thank you for the opportunity to have fellowship with you, mighty God. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. That is why we cannot start anything without you. We invite you into this program we invite you into this fellowship that you will come and be the head of everything that we do here because lord jesus is all about you we thank you for the answered prayer in jesus mighty name we pray amen dear beloved once again we are going to go into the word of god and i am sure that if you have your bibles get a bible right now and let us go into a very famous scripture I'm sure that without even your Bible, you would know the scripture because it's, it's, it's a word that we've heard it many times. But today I am trusting God that God is going to open a new avenue for you to see a new revelation in this to the glory of God. Hallelujah. I, I am reading from Psalm 23. Psalm 23, and I'm just taking verse number 5. Verse number five, and I and I know that it's going to bless you mightily. Uh, let us hear the word of God, Psalm twenty-three, <clears throat> verse number five says, "You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil; my cup runs over." Now today the message is entitled "In the Presence." of my enemies in the presence of my enemies somebody would wonder why this you see bible makes us understand that the enemies are against our progress you know every enemy comes with the purpose of destroying your enemy does not want to see you go to the next level but the word we just read in Psalm 23, verse number 5, says that he prepares a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Now, why would God want to prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies? It is for a reason. Because, you see, the enemy is against your progress. Now, somebody come with me, and, and let me take my time and explain this to you. Enemies are people who will do everything they can. Some of us grew up with people who said you will amount to nothing. There is nothing good that will come out of you. You would not become anything in life. These are the enemies of progress. They are people who will continually and constantly bring you down. Everything you do, they will see nothing good about it. All they desire is to see you down. They are the enemies. Now, some of them, you would not even see them physically. You have physical enemies and spiritual enemies. But in most cases, the enemies are far off. And they are plotting ways and means to bring you down. We call it the PhD, pull him down syndrome. All that they need is to see that you are down. 
But the Lord God Almighty, it is he who blesses. And David recognized this. So David said in Psalm 23 that we just read, that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. It, the, the word not want means that I have everything that I need. My dear sister, my dear brother, if you will make the Lord your shepherd, not only would you have everything that you need, but he says that he's going to bless you in the presence of your enemies. Hallelujah, 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 somebody. Now listen, listen, listen very carefully because I am so excited. You know, I feel like jumping already. Why? Because he is going to lay a table for you in the presence of your enemy. I've heard a lot of Christians say, oh, let me just be quiet and enjoy the blessings of the Lord. If God wanted you to be quiet, then he would not lay a feast for you in the presence of your enemy. Now, when a table is prepared, it's elaborate. You see, when people are having their birthdays or they're having occasions, they will go to invent planners and say, come and uh, plan my wedding for me. Come and plan my uh, birthday for me. And then the invent planners come in and they say, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to have the high table over here, and we're going to have the low table over here, and we're going to have the lights set like this, and we're going to have the table, and the banquet is going to be like this. Why? Because the event planner is being paid to make sure that everything is laid out, looking beautiful and wonderful. But in this case, the one that is preparing the table is no ordinary event planner than the Lord himself. That is why today I am so excited. Mm. The Lord is going to prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. The very people that said that you will amount to nothing, they must see. That's why I tell people, you know what I tell people? I say, don't pray for your enemies to die early. I have some Christians who think that somebody is against you so much that you are praying that they die. No way. God does not want to kill your enemies. Because, you see, by the time God prepares that table, if the enemy is dead, how would they know your end? The people that saw you struggling in life, the people that saw you go to jail and come out, God wants them to see where he's taking you to. God wants them. You see, I, I, I tell people that until you know my story, you will not understand my glory. In order for you to, to, to understand my glory, go back and check my story. Because once upon a time, <laughs> I was a nobody. I was the worst of the worst. Today, the Lord has taken me out of that deepest darkness. And you are saying that when God blesses me, I should go and sit somewhere and hide? It can be. The Lord wants people to see the glory that he has bestowed upon your life so that when that glory comes, everybody will know that this is the doing of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, somebody who is watching me. If you just uh, tune in, you're watching GTV, God's Beast Television, right here. And we are bringing you the word of God, taken from Psalm 23, verse number 5. And the word of God says, in the presence of my enemies. That is what we are talking about. In the presence of my enemies. God is preserving your enemies so that they will see your latter end. Because it is only God that has the power to speak and it is established. Nobody can change your destiny. Nobody can change the purpose for which God created you. The Lord brought you and I onto this earth for a purpose. We are in the United States of America for a purpose. And the purpose is that God is going to use us to bring his salvation to somebody. So God is not going to put you in a corner and cover you. When the blessings of God come, you are not going to hide behind some trailer and eat your bread. No. In the presence of the very enemy will the Lord prepare a table for you. Not only that, but he says that he will anoint your head with oil and your cup would overflow. You see, let me tell you something, my dear. The blessings of God will come so much that it will overflow for even the people around you to also benefit from the blessings of the Lord upon you. Today, look at me. I'm on TV. 
It is not because I'm better than anybody. It is because the Lord has chosen me. He says that it is he who knew me before I was even born. And he prepared me for a day like this, that I will be seated here. I will be seated here. Speaking his words, bringing hope to the hopeless, bringing encouragement to those who are discouraged. To say to somebody, there is hope because if God has done it for me, God will do it for you. That is the God that we serve. And his doings are marvelous. I, I just feel like stopping right now because I believe somebody has received this word. Look, I am telling you today, if only you have received this word, then the Lord will bless you mightily. He says, in the presence of your enemies, he will lay a table. And, oh, let me read it. Let me read it because when, when it gets to this time, I just want to read it again. He says, <laughs> you anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. That, that is the point that I want to talk about right now. Goodness and mercy. Goodness, anytime you step out, goodness and mercy is following you. Goodness is to your right Mm, mercy is to your left. So who can be against you? If God be for you, who can be against you? Because you know what? Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Goodness and mercy. So when you open the door, it's goodness. When you close the door, it's mercy. When you open another door, it's goodness. When you close the door, it's mercy. Goodness and mercy has become your personal aids. They go with you. They come with you. Wherever you are, goodness and mercy. What a mighty God we serve. He is the only God. And what does it take? All you need to do is to call upon the name. Call upon the name and you'll be saved. I am trusting and believing that somebody's receiving this word. But I am not done yet. Come with me. Uh, listen, you are asking yourself, Pastor, what must I do to be saved? Pastor, what must I do to receive this goodness and mercy that you've just talked about? It is very simple. All you need is to give your life to him. Are you ready to give your life to him? If you're ready to give your life to him, then I am here presenting this God to you. Don't let what the enemy has said bring you down. You know what? The enemy has nothing to offer. If it was left to the enemy alone, I would not be seated here today. You know how many times they told me that I amount to nothing? You know how many times they put me down? They said that I was not even fit to live among human beings. But today, the Lord has laid a table for me in the presence of my enemies. In the very presence of my enemies. This is why I'm inviting you that come. Look, come and fellowship with the Lord. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Because he is a God who never fails. He's just waiting for you, somebody. You will say that, Pastor, but you don't know what I've been through. Pastor, what I've been through is worse of the worst. I, I will laugh at you. I say, bring it on, bring it on. And I will tell you the things that I have been through. And I will tell you where I was that the Lord found me. In the, deep, in the valley of the shadow of death. Somebody who the whole world said that, look, this guy, this is it. He's finished. Today, who? Look where the Lord has brought me. See how far the Lord has brought me. It takes his word to turn things around. He says a thousand years in his sight is the same. For Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Are you ready? Are you ready for God to do something new in your life? That is what is important, dearly beloved, in Christ Jesus. I am just about bringing this message to a close. Because you know when I come, I don't speak for too long. Because I know that God has something special for your life. I know. I can feel it in my spirit. He says in the presence of your enemies, he will lay a table for you. And your cup will run over. Test and see. I didn't come to tell you that we are building a new building, so come and give us money. No. I didn't come to say that, you know, uh, God says 10 people are going to be blessing me with $1,000. That is not what I came to tell you. But I came to tell you that we serve a living God who, if you put your trust in, would get you out of any trouble that you find yourself. Don't allow people to detect what your life will be. Put your trust in God, and he who has the power will deliver you. May the Lord bless what we have heard. 
in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. But listen, we are not done. This is one of the favorite points of this program, and that is the music side. Today I have a song called Call Him. <laughs> and I just spoke about you calling the Lord. Just call him. It's a song by John Winners. And it says, call him. Just call him. And the Lord will be there for you. After this music, I'll come back and give you the address to our fellowship. And my personal email address where you can reach me at. And together we can share fellowship. So let's go to... Um, John Wiener, and the song is Call Him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it for the kingdom. Here we go. Everybody, come on. Everybody, come on. Everybody, come on. Everybody, let's go. Whenever you call him, the Lord will be right there whenever you need him. No doubt about it, he's present helping the time of trouble. Trust and believe it. I never ever seen the righteous forsaken. His name is Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. 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 Jesus.
Yeah, just call him. Whatever your need is, I believe that the song has blessed you mightily. Oh, right here in the studio, me and my producer, the song has uh, blessed us mightily. And I know that uh, my producer, Kenny, loves the song so much. Uh, praise be to the name of the Lord. Just call him. That is all you need to do. If you want his phone number, get in touch with me and I'll give you his phone number. You can call him any day, 24-7, and he will hear you out. Uh, welcome once again to GTV. And uh, my name is Pastor Jill of G-Man. As you know, hey, listen, I'm going to give you this announcement before I leave. Uh, our fellowship is New Life Christian Love Fellowship. And the address uh, to the fellowship is 648 Bay Street. 648 Bay Street in Staten Island. Yes, just come to us. We are there Wednesdays. Oh, that is Bible studies. We meet every Wednesday, Bible study, 7 p.m. We are there Fridays. It's prayer time. Prayer time. We meet and pray the same 7 p.m. Then Sunday is worship service at 10 a.m. Come as you are, and you will be blessed mightily. You know, it's not a place where, you know, we ask for money. Pastor, why are you always talking about money? Because today, because of money, a lot of people don't want to go to church because they think that church has become money business. But you see, all the fingers are not equal. So it is not every church that bombard people with money, money, money. So when I come to the broadcast, I want to emphasize on that and let people know that come as you are. You know, Jesus Christ came. He blessed us. He gave us everything that we want for free and freely have we received really do we give so come as you are and you have no problem don't say i don't have a new shoe i don't have a new dress no none of that just come as you are and you will be blessed but right now i want to take you into a word of prayer let us pray right now dear heavenly father we come to you right now in the name of jesus everlasting mighty father you are the reason for everything that we have had today Without you, there is nothing that we can do. There is somebody out there who needs to call you because they are going through certain challenges. It is my prayer that they will find the courage and the strength to call upon your name. Because you say, anybody that comes to you, you will in no wise turn away. Father, it is my sincere desire and prayer that somebody who is going through a struggle right now, who is going through a very difficult time, maybe financially things are not even working out the way. They are about to lose a home. They are about to lose a job. I pray that, Father, as they call upon your name, you will intervene. You will stop all these negative things from happening. For we had your word. You said, in the presence of our enemies, you will prepare a table for us. But it belongs to those that will call upon your name. This is the reason why, Father, we pray that somebody out there who is in need of a breakthrough, or oh, even after they've heard the word, when they call, Father, let your will be done in their life. Let your purpose alone be established in their life. Father Almighty, we thank you. Lord Jesus, we thank you because we know that you are prayer answering God. Lord, all the testimonies that we are hearing, it is by your grace. It is by your loving kindness. Father, we continue to glorify in you because we know that nobody has put their trust in you and has ever been disappointed. We thank you. We bless you. Even in Jesus' mighty name have we prayed with thanksgiving. And let the saints everywhere say amen and amen. Dearly beloved, don't take yourself away from this wonderful word that we have heard today. The Lord, it is only he who is able to turn things around and give you a better life. I am a living testimony to God's goodness. So I invite you once again that don't sit at home, but this Sunday, make it a point. Come with your family. If it is that you want to come with your whole family, invite somebody, come. If you think that, oh, I'm too shy to come alone, come with your whole family. We will receive you with Jesus' joy so that your life will not be the same. Whatever struggles, whatever challenges you're going through, there is a solution to your problem. He has an answer to your problem. But you need to take that step of faith because he does not impose his will on anybody except you come. Then the Lord will meet you at the point of your need. So take the opportunity 
and come and let us fellowship together and you will become a living testimony to the glory of God. Amen. Dearly beloved, once again, uh, our time is almost up, but I'm not going to go without leaving you my email address so that if it is that you want to reach me, you will be able to reach me. My email address is what you see on the screen right now, pastorgman at gmail.com. Pastorgman at gmail.com. If you have any questions, if it is that you have any suggestions, maybe there's something you would like to see on this program, you can always drop me a line at pastorgman at gmail.com, and I'll be more than happy uh, to have a you know, a response to you. I am also a chaplain, so if it is that uh, you are home, maybe uh, you have a disabled mother or father or somebody who cannot come to church, but you will want uh, me to come and pray with them and even give them a communion at home, I am more than welcome. I will do that, and I uh, will come and pray with you. It comes with no charge. Don't forget, it's free. It's something that the Lord has placed on my heart to serve the community. So whatever it is that you need, just let me know and I'll be there. Once again, if you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is your opportunity to do so. Accept him into your life. And when he comes into your life, he makes all things different and things becomes better. And the Lord will bless you mightily. So don't forget that next week, the same time, the same place, I will be back with the word and the music to bless you mightily. So in the meantime, in between time, what I have to say is that stay blessed, no stress, and I am out like that. I love you and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Gospies. -bye.